guys, it's me, it's Queen Oset Haru, and I'm coming to you today with another exciting edition of Ask an Aquarius. Okay, so if you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and smack the bell. Now today, I wanted to answer a question that a lot of people have asked me about. Let me make sure I have my notes, because <laughs> a lot of people ask me this about this. Um, as a matter of fact, I've been asked about this multiple times, so much so that I took a week and a half to research it before I answered the question because there was so much stuff. I've read stuff by Deepak Chopra. I've read stuff by Oprah, by Elizabeth Gilbert. I saw stuff online. Um, I looked at um, some guy who was like a, um, a shaman um uh in in india or something like that i looked at several different sources online sources youtube videos books i had in the apartment i looked everywhere to answer these questions for you guys and the reason why i took so much research is because nobody agrees on this i'm gonna tell you straight up the first problem i had is that nobody agrees on this information a um, couple scholars who worked together did, but for the most part, everybody had a different idea uh, about this. Um, another thing is that it changes at a certain point and adds more information. Um, what I'm talking about is soulmates, uh, twin flames, life partners. People have asked me about these concepts repeatedly. So I wanted to talk to you guys about it. Now, in North America, this is something that further complicates it. In North America and some other places in the world, these terms are used interchangeably. So some people may say, I'm like, you may hear me even say, um, somebody was my soulmate or I'm manifesting a soulmate. Um, a lot of times people will say soulmate when they mean life partner. Some people believe the life partner and the soulmate can be the same person. Some people call the soulmate a twin flame. Some people say the twin flame is a whole different person, <laughs> you know? So nobody agrees on this stuff. So it was no way to give you guys a, a cohesive answer. Like, okay, this is absolutely what it is. So I had to just look at everybody's theories and just see what made sense to me. Okay, that's the best I could do with it. So first of all, let me tell you the story. According to the Greeks, Zeus created uh, human beings in this one form. So there was uh, four legs, four arms, two heads. You know, basically it was two beings put together as one. That's how we were all created. We were created with our other half literally attached to us. So a being was two. It was like a sign. We were all like a Siamese twin, for example. And that twin was our soul mate, our other half. You know, that was our person, right? So Zeus felt as though we got a little big for our britches, <laughs> according to the story, and split us all in half. And now you have to spend your days roaming the earth looking for your other half, looking for your soulmate. And you feel incomplete and unhappy until you find this person. Now, some people believe this is total hogwash. They don't think any of this makes any sense. And they totally dismiss the whole thing. Okay. Now, other people feel like it, it makes sense. And to me, I think it does make sense. And this is what I think. I think that the whole story about the mythology, I think that's just, you know, we use mythology to explain things of the spiritual and the scientific nature. So I think it's just a story that they use to explain it. But I think this is the real truth of the matter. I think that um, human beings reincarnate. I talked to you guys about past lives. I feel like we have past lives. I feel like we reincarnate over and over again until we learn all the lessons we need to learn and then we go on to be an ancestor or an ascended master or whatever you want to call that final stage where you go, you know, with God, go to the all and just wait for everybody else to catch up. That's basically what it looks like to me. So I think that because of that, we've all known each other before. And some of these uh, theories, they say we reincarnate in groups. So like groups of us reincarnate together at the same time on the planet over and over again. So in, in my understanding, if I have reincarnated with people, you know, over and over and over again, I'm going to recognize their soul when I come across them. 
I may not know like, oh, that was Sheila in the past life. I might not know that part, but I know you feel familiar and I don't know you, but something about you feels familiar. That to me is a soulmate. It's somebody that you've known in a past life and you may have known many, many, many times. You may have been their daughter, their sister, their brother, their husband, their wife. And I think it's just somebody that you knew before and you are resonating. You are vibrating in such a way in this life that you and that person have drawn each other again. And maybe again, and maybe again, and maybe again throughout lifetimes. That's what it seems like to me. That's why I think that you can have more than one soulmate because you've been with more than one person. Even if you're only with one person each lifetime, if you've had 10 lifetimes, that's 10 people. So it's 10 people on the planet at any given time who could be one of your soulmates. That's what it looks like to me. Okay. Soulmate concept. The twin flame. The twin flame was a little bit more complicated and the twin flame came about later on. Um, I didn't see evidence of the twin flame until later in human existence. And basically what they said, they said a lot of different things, but the, the, the synopsis was, was that your twin flame was generally um, not on the planet at the same time as you. Your, your twin flame is literally the other half of you. So this is your other spiritual half. This half is in the ethers while you're on earth and vice versa. You're not on earth at the same time. So this person is helping lead you, this spirit is helping lead you to situations and they're helping lead you where you need to go, lead you to people and that kind of thing. Um, this person comes on the planet at the same time as you in your last incarnation. So you're both of your last times here, you both come together and you finish together. Somebody had a quote where they said, we're all just walking each other home. So at the last incarnation, you walk each other home is the idea. Now, Soulmate relationships and twin flame relationships are said to be sometimes very difficult, always intense and sometimes very difficult. Um, they're also life lessons. These people help you learn life lessons. They help you learn the, the universal laws that you need to level up. So soulmates and twin flames are very similar um, in that way, except for with a twin flame, you only have one. Whereas you, according to some of the sources, can have more than one soulmate. So you only have one other half of your soul. In the twin flame model, your soulmates are not your other half. The twin flame is your other half, and that twin flame is off in the ethers. And your soulmates are the people who are here on the earth who are going to teach you these life lessons on earth. While your twin flame is in heaven helping you behind the scenes. Okay, so those are the concepts between the, the concepts of the two and the differences between the two. Um, they say that, like, again, a lot of times your soulmate and you may or may not stay together. Some people may marry their soulmate and be with their soulmate for the rest of their incarnation this time. Some people may get with multiple soulmates who teach them different things. Sometimes your soulmate is an ugly relationship. It's not always a beautiful relationship. And a lot of times they break up. And because af after you learn the lesson, you move on to a next soulmate or you just move on. Okay. So you don't stay with that person a lot of times. Sometimes these relationships are very painful. With the twin flame, you do stay with them typically until death. It's one of the most greatest love stories, one of the most intense relationships. It can be difficult as well because the two of you have a lot of growing to do and it is your last time walking together. So you're finishing up all the work you've done before. Okay. So the twin flame is a, is, is a, is, is a, is similar. <laughs> it's similar, but it's different at the same time. So that's the difference between these two things. Um, 
the twin flame is literally you. It's the other half, literally the other half of your energy. Um, just like in the story of Zeus, Zeus, that story was about soulmates, but it really more accurately um, describes twin flames because the soulmate was not a was not the other half of you. It's just somebody that you, um, like I said, had been with before, and it's also somebody. Um, they said Esther Hicks said it's somebody that you're in alignment with. So that means that you're vibrating similarly. So you're both in the same place. Like, um, I feel like Voldemort was one of my soulmates because we were equally as screwed up as each other at the same time. We were both screwed up. I just had the common sense to know I was screwed up and want to be better. So at the time, we were exactly the same. But then when I wanted to change, when I wanted to grow, I had to what? Leave the relationship. You see, because he didn't want to grow with me. If your soulmate will not grow with you, then you have to leave them. And as you can see, some of the times these relationships are ugly, like mine was with Voldemort. Some of the times they're intense, like mine was with Voldemort. So it's a very similar kind of energy. So you're, you can have more than one soulmate. So that was one of my soulmates. My soul evolved past that level. So then I moved on to another one. And hopefully I'll move on to another one. So you can marry your soulmate. If you marry your soulmate, your soulmate becomes your life partner. Okay, if you're in your last in your if you're in your last incarnation and you meet your twin flame and marry them, now your twin flame is your life partner. Okay, and you also can have a life partner that's not a soulmate and is not a twin flame. Elizabeth Gilbert was very clear on this part. She said you can have. First of all, Elizabeth Gilbert doesn't really believe in the concept of soulmates. And one of the things that she said about that was that it's too much pressure to put on another person, that this other person is going to be my everything. So I understood what she was trying to say. She thinks that um, we do have soulmates, and she thinks it's more of a, a life lesson kind of thing that we're learning, more so than them being our everything. It's somebody who's come to help us evolve, basically. So her concept... I thought was interesting because she said you don't really marry your soulmate in a lot of situations. She said you're better off marrying your life partner because a life partner is somebody that you are growing with, you are accumulating wealth with, you're learning things with, but the lessons are not as intense and they're not as painful in that way. A life partner is more like your best friend. You know, you're very close, you have a good relationship, but it's mostly harmonious. Most people, some people do argue and fight with their best friend, but most people have a harmonious relationship with their best friend. Their best friend is like their sister, you know, it's like their ace boon coon. So if you marry a life partner, that's what it would be like, like marrying your best friend, but they're not a soulmate. There is no recollection between you. You have maybe have never even met that soul before. That could be a brand new soul from a different soul group that you didn't even meet. And uh, interestingly enough, Elizabeth Gilbert, when she was talking to Oprah, she um, she recommended that. And I, I really, I was like, you know what? That's kind of cool because marrying your best friend is very Aquarius. <laughs> That's very, very Aquarius. And you're still going to learn. You're still going to grow, but it's not going to be the same level of intensity according to the experts. So that's the difference. So people who are out there and you're looking to manifest a loving relationship into your life, know that the twin flame relationship is something that you really cannot manifest. It comes to you when it's supposed to. It comes to you in your last incarnation with those last lessons you're supposed to learn. Until then, that person is in heaven looking over you and helping you. This soulmate relationships you can manifest into your life, and many of us do, and many of us have them. But the, the soulmates, once again, like I said, is all about lessons. So you can manifest a soulmate if that's what you want to. I'm not going for manifestation of a soulmate. Now that I have heard the definitions, and like I said before, some people use these definitions interchangeably, and that's okay. If that's how you use them, that's fine. But now that I know the definitions, <laughs> I want to manifest a life partner. So I'm glad that I learned this now because right now I'm working on manifesting a life partner. 
I'm taking an actual soulmate class, which I'm thinking to myself should be called a life partner class. Because now that I understand this, that's how I want to word my questions and my um, um, my conversation with the universe. Because I feel like um, if they want to send me a soulmate because there's things I need to learn, I will accept it. But I need, I'm not going to try to manifest the lessons, okay? I'm just going to let God, goddess, all that is, send me lessons. I'm going to work on manifesting a life partner, a best friend. That is what I want for my wife, okay? So that's what I'm going to do. Now, some of you may or may not agree with the definitions. Some of you may or may not agree that this is how it works. Some of you may not may or may or may not agree with all of this. Like I said before, some people don't don't agree with this. Period. They think the whole thing is not even real. So it's fine whatever you think about it. If you think it's real, that's good. If you don't think it's real, that's good. If you use the terms interchangeably, that's good. Any of this works because. Anything you think, there's experts out there that will corroborate and back up what you think. Okay? So it's fine. You know, lots of people have already thought about that already. Lots of people are arguing about it on the internet, discussing it. You know, the whole thing is going on. If you want to Google it, you'll see the whole um, conversation that I had the pleasure of reading for a week and a half. So that's fine. Whatever you think about it is fine. But... I'm just giving you what I found. So I truly believe it does come from past lives. I do think that soulmates are people that I've known for or they are in alignment with me. They vibrate in some kind of way um, what I, where I am right now. Okay. Um, twin flames. I'm not too sure about, to be honest with you. Um, I read about them. I see, I see what they are. I understand the concept. Um, I have never come across one. I haven't come across mine. I guess I'm not in my last incarnation, um, which is neither here nor there. I, I kind of thought that. I used to always say that we had to go through all 12 signs of the zodiac. So since I'm Aquarius, I was like, I guess I got to come back and be a Pisces next time. So I already had accepted that I might have to come back again. And I messed up a lot in the beginning of my life. So I really accepted it. So I'm fine. I'm fine with that. If I don't meet my twin flame this time and they're up in heaven helping me, I am happy for the help. I will take every last bit of it. So that's what I learned, guys. That's what I learned about the twin flame versus the soulmate versus the life partner. So you think about it. You let me know what you think. Which one are you trying to manifest? Do you or which one have you manifested? Are you with your twin flame? Let us know in the comments. I would love to know somebody who actually really is with their twin flame, really feels like they're in their last incarnation. Um, according to what I understand, if you're with your twin flame, it should be a beautiful, loving relationship. It may be difficult. Uh, twin flames, by the way, I want to mention one thing before I go. It said that sometimes in a twin flame relationship, one or the other will run away and they won't want to, the, the intensity of the emotion, the intensity of the vibration, they might not want to deal with it. So they may run away. They call them the runner and you have to go after them and they come back and then y'all work it out and then y'all fall in love. Okay. So some people go through that aspect of it, of the person not being ready. Um, so tell me, I want to know if any of you really, truly have found your twin flame. Are you in your last incarnation? Are you with this person? They said it's a psychic bond between the two people. They can read each other's minds. They can finish each other's sentences. Um, they always conscious of each other. Um, it's like a, a real psychic bond between these two, not just, you know, infatuation or in love or something like that. But it's like it's more intense because there is a psychic bond between the two people because they're literally the same soul. They think the same thoughts sometimes. Um, they can finish each other's sentences. And this happens with soulmates, too. You have this kind of energy with soulmates, this energy of connection. But it's supposed to be 20 times more intense with the twin flame. So let me know if you think you have a twin flame or what your opinions are about it. Okay? See you later. Peace.